All right, I hope today uh, we have, we're going to start with one of the things is one of the important aid of developing physical, mental, and spiritual capacities of our youth people. Um, the other one, each patch propose a course of study related to a particular topic. The next one is intend to help the person to develop spiritual, development spiritual, okay, every honor. Um, the story, the purpose is growing in wisdom and vigor and favor with God and man, okay. Um, one of the story of this is the first 16 honors were created in 1928 when the master guys class was approved by the general conference so those are the 16 first honors we have um, they are all patches <coughs> okay um, they are all patches and feet on sashes like you see and we have about 300 honors. The honors are divided into the following areas. As you see, we have house, whole art, art and craft, nature, health and science, outreach ministry, outdoor industries, recreational, vocational, and ADRA. We have some honors that came from there. Uh, the finer points, um, they are divided in different levels, one, two, and three. Um, those goes with the levels of difficulty. Um, more ahead, we're going to talk about the, um, the greatest they can do, the, the level one, level two, level three. They are so hard for them to do. Um, there are some um, honors that are regular and advanced honors. Um, the master guy, master awards, those are, um, those are the ones you earn when you do seven um, areas. You earn, those are the ones you um, earn. They have um, small bronze stars, those are the ones when you earn an advanced honor. And instructor diamonds are when you teach an honor. You earn the little uh, diamond. And of course, part of that is the sashes. Okay, lavanda. Um, Goals and philosophy on teaching honors, personal advice, Christian spiritual lesson, all honors. They have a spiritual lessons, okay, really. Closer to nature, some honors, you know, and approach to competition, lifestyle development, evangelist, church doctrine, and church lifestyle. For the Pathfinder, the, for the Pathfinder, there are level requirements. So some of the honors are part of the classes. So the classes requirements, they have already those honors. Um, leadership development, they, um, they help the Pathfinder to develop leadership skills while they discuss and share with others. And then, they receive an award when they complete the requirement honor at the end, okay? Those are those honors. For the club, they share experience with other classes, with other uh, clubs, they can share the experiences. Their unique experience, like when you're teaching an honor, it's not gonna be, every class is different. You cannot expect to be the class be the same. Um, and every, every class make a, a, a word different. Teamwork, they help the kids to work as a team with another, another groups. Golf, 
goals on teaching honor. They have, like I already talked, they have a specific age. The level one is grades five to six, level two, grades seven to 10, level three, grades 11 plus, okay? Uh, the reasons, goals in teaching honors, because it's required in the book or every class they have an honor that is required to teach. Because all their kids did it, they want to do it too. Because it's fun, kids love to do honors because it's experience. So they can, you know, explore, they can do it. Because it looks good on massage. <laughs> Just want to remind all of you that if you want to get this PowerPoint, put your email on the uh, pink survey sheet. Put your email address on there and say, please send the How to Teach Honors PowerPoint, and, and we can get it to you. Because we didn't print it out, so save me a tree, you know. So if you want this, we can send it to you. Okay, and then because it's look good on my side, some of the kids, they say, Wow, they look as sad they want to have it. So they just want to do honors because it looks good in the sash. Um, how to plan in teaching honors? We need to know the time and cost involved. Sometimes um, doing on any topic like archery as a sample, just to buy all those tools is is like a little expensive okay so we when we teach an owner always we have to to see the time and the cost involved um teaching owners some owners you can teach in a day like an hour or weeks or all year long is is different okay um know the audience you know, we need to know our kids. Like somebody say, like if they're like so hyper, how to to maintain them in interesting of the class. It's all dependent on the activities or all the things you can bring in for them to, to take to take the attention of them. Young, old people, of course, if we work with um, children with Kids is all different when we work with uh, adults. Uh, individual or groups, when we work one-on-one -on -one or uh, huge groups. Inside, outside, some honors, you can do it inside. Some honors, we can do it in camping or outside. So it's all depending how we're planning to do the honors. Some honors require to have a homework and parents involved. As an example, uh, I can do like the uh, weather. The weather they have to, for a week, they have to see the weather so you cannot do it in the, in the class. So you have to take it home and they have to check every day the weather and write it down. Um, I just bring one of the ideas. Um, let's talk one more. Okay, honor materials. What do you need for to uh, find an owner or to do an owner. So you can search for books going to the library. Internet, you can find so, so many things in the internet. Uh, copy machine, you can do craft. Uh, I just brought one of the ideas. Um, some of the kids getting so tired being at school all day long. Yeah. No, finish your story. Okay. And then the kids getting uh, like, so tired, and sometimes we need to do an activity so excited for them to do. And one of the activities for them to do is a walk away, you know, walk through. And it, this is an honor. Like you see here is the shelf honor. You have over there the questions, and all the answers are over there. So you made the kids going around, read, and find the answers and write it down. Of course, always when we do an honor, always we have to bring materials for them to, to explore. You know, uh, like shelves, bring uh, shelves if you have shelves, or bring books from the library. So because that's why the kids like to explore. 
and, and that's appropriate for some honors and not for all. Obviously, you can't do archery by looking at Exactly. No, all all, not all honors you can do like that, but some honors like is so long or like they're going to be like boring for them. So having doing something um, different, not like you're sitting and you're talking the whole time, those kids are going to be like boring. Yes. <laughs> so that way you made them to walk through all and then... Um, it's fun because I found this answer here. The other, oh, I found this one over here. So the kids are involved there in, in movement. Uh, one of the resources you can find uh, the answers of the owners. You can find it in those sites. You gonna say something? No, go ahead. You're okay. Uh huh. And I'm just gonna leave it over there for you if you wanna. I don't know what is. Okay, let me. Okay. Um, something else I'm going to say. Um, you're done? Just let me know. And then I can, I can put it at the end. If you would like to have that, I can send it to you. Okay? And at the very end, when we just is teach an honor conclusion. When you start at honor, please finish the honor. When we do the honor, uh, if we have like 12, so just do, you know, say, okay, I can do number one, two, and six. No. When you get the patch, you have to do the whole requirement to get the patch. And when you start, always finish because the kid or the kids, the pathfinder want to have the patch. Mm -hmm. And when you finish the class, when you finish trying to order on time, because sometimes they're out of, you know, stock and the kids get like, oh no, you know, they're, I know they're working hard for them to have it on, on the sash. Complete all the requirements to earn the honor. That's the one I already say. If you are bored, you they are bored. They are bored. So if you teach and is they're bored, they're gonna be so make it fun for them. Yes, you have a question. Well, it's interesting, you know, for example in the companions, one of the requirements uh -huh. in the friends making friends area is to fulfill requirements one, two, and three of cultural diversity. And so they do have some of those scattered out. Now, in this case, if you want to get advanced friends, you finish the honor. But they're not all like that. No, there are some all. where for classwork, you're supposed to do a few parts of an honor, yes. but there's no, no coming back. That is a requirement to finish the book and get your, right. no, you know. But if you will lie, because if you teach that, you just have to finish like two or three. So you do the advance, and then you finish, and the, the child can, can get the, the whole thing. All right. Any questions? Yes. Uh, with your instruction in the class, sometimes there's a practical part that they have to do. Like, for example, I taught birds last year, and I gave them a sheet to fill out to, you know, where they had to observe 50 birds in the wild. Mm -hmm. I had two kids come back with that. Do you have any suggestions on how to encourage them to follow up with it and do their work out of the, on their own? Well, one of the, yeah, you can do it in the house um, or in the, in, the, in, the, in the meetings. Okay, you can do it in the meetings. Any suggestion, is, if you bring that, you're going to have that. The other suggestion, when you finish the, 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 the class, have the patch ready for them. I mean, they needed to do the 50, observe the 50 birds in the wild. Only two of them completed it. Only, Only two of them wanted the honor. They don't, they don't get the honor. That's why. Right. If those two finish. You know, anything that would encourage them to help them to try to do the. You, you, you have the same problem, uh, for instance, when I did lighthouses at Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. Because they were having to walk around in groups to keep their kids under supervision, I didn't say under control, I said supervision. <laughs> <coughs> there is a difference. Um, 
you could tell when a group came in and there was one just kind of dragging along, like, why am I here? Yeah. You know, another one. But the teacher was like, oh, this looks interesting. You know, and yes, as an adult, you know, before that, I talked that earlier that year, but Kathy and I, for research, we took a fast weekend trip down to Tybee Island to go look at the White House. You know, and then started looking at the books in the house, in, in their gift shop and stuff, and got myself interested in it. So when I taught the class, that girl answered all the questions except for one. She was that close, and I said, you know, you're here with your director, your director can work with you later and finish it. You're this close. And she still had the attitude of, why, why am I here? Hey, you know, I don't know if they ever did or not, but. How did you choose the bird on her? Did you choose it as a director? No, some of the kids had asked. The reason I mentioned is I try to be specific on picking an honor. I know that I can complete. I know that we don't have the opportunity to see 50 birds. Mm -hmm. So in that case, we went to the zoo, and we just kind of, we saw 30 birds. We kind of kind of signed off with 20 birds. I mean, you, you don't, some of it, in my opinion, you have to kind of tailor to your group. Right. And it, if you saw 21 birds and you didn't see 50, but yet the good kids got a good time, is it worth it? And not give them the honor, be so rigid on the honor, the honor. You got to read number 49. Box, it yeah, turns right. them off from pathfinding. Right. Yeah. right. The same thing happened with with this honor. They, this honor, one of the requirements they have to 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 find 20 different types of um, shells. That can be a, a homework, but you know they're not going to do it at home. So the idea is I brought a lot of them and then I, I give a blank sheet of paper with some, pi some pictures so they have to look and found it. And they have having fun. And they finished right there. They did. They complete. Sometimes, like he say, when you choose that one, you have to bring the materials for them because you know that at home they're not going to do it. Right. At least the parents are involved too. I mean, where are you going to find shells around here? No, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's hard, like complete, like complete that honor is, is hard because you have to go to the beach. It's funny because I told Justice Cut finally here, and what I'm wearing, I went to like the thrift store, dollar store, because they have like the craft, and I bought different shells and just made packages. It was a few, and then I added pictures and said, okay, here's an example of this. You have this to keep, it's your keepsake, and then you Yes, you just give it to them, and then you can finish that in one day. Okay. Any else? I was going to add, add to that, because I did the scrapbooking on a, a, we were doing it during the honors day, so we really only had about an hour to do it, but the honors says complete a whole entire scrapbook, and um, that, to me, takes me two, an hour to do two pages in a scrapbook. So I had everybody do two pages, because after you went through the instruction and they did the pages, they really understood how to scrapbook, having done those two pages. So I just had them do two pages instead of the entire book. It, 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 your entire it, book was two pages long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the way you look at it. <laughs> what, what, was it a requirement? Say so you had to have 50 pages? Uh, I don't know how many pages they're supposed to be. It's but a book. It's a book. Yeah, once, once you put them all together, it was a book. Right. <laughs> yeah, but no, there was it, a time for all that. In terms of that, going back to the honor of the birds, uh -huh. you have to see 50 birds. This is that you have to see them uh, presently alive right there, or you can just view it in, on TV or on uh, videos of birds. Too. This is in natural wild. In natural. In natural wild, yeah. yes. You have, you have to read all the requirements. I didn't, I didn't um, do that one maybe because of that. You have to, you have to see. Yeah, you have to. Because like this one, you, they say over here that you can see from pictures. Because to find 20, those are, it's difficult. You can find 20. It's going to take like five years going different uh, beaches. Yeah, and if you, you know? live in the desert of Arizona somewhere, where are you going to find seashells or that many birds? Right, like that. Come up on the beach and send them. Yeah. Could you see them like on internet if you're willing to set up laptops like at church? and put on National Geographic program? That you is, can do, that works too. That is one thing, and yes, I, I will be satisfied if they put together a photo portfolio 
doing their own search, you know, making them work for it, even on the internet, sometimes if that's appropriate because it's impossible to do it where we're at, that may be a way to substitute. But, but you have to make the call. You're the one signing off on it. If they know what they've learned, if they've learned anything from it, if they've gone through the effort and say, okay, what makes you know, a robin different than a, a sparrow, you know, and they can tell you what the difference is, they've learned something. Making, you know, making fun, like, if you're going to do dogs, dog is a long uh, honor. Bring a dog, come on, bring the animal so the kid can see it, the kid can, you know, if you bring the animal, they're going to learn more, okay? I know it's hard, but if you, if you can, like, the, the kids can score, they're going to love, they're going to love. Um. I brought it, you know, I, I put together a little quick companion document here, kind of notes just to t talk about and think about. Um, some of this, like I said, is material that's been through some of the earlier classes today. You may or not been in, but be appropriate for your audience. You know, if you've got a small club where you got you know, a 10-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a 15-year-old, and that's it, you know, you got either end of the spectrum, you're going to have a hard time keeping them all interested. So you're going to have to say, okay, what do you want to learn? Is it something I already know, or is it something we can work on together and figure it out? You know, be appropriate to them. Get them, get their buy-in. Because you, 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 you want them to sign off that they want to do it. That, that helps if they're interested. Um, Attendance. What did I mean by that? I don't know. Oh, how many people? Yeah. yeah. You're, you're going to teach differently to three people than you would teach to one or 50 or trying to get through, how many did I get through? A couple hundred at Oshkosh. I know. You know, it, it, it's, it's a whole different ball game when you're teaching that. It was funny is I was teaching Lighthouse Level 1 and across the aisle from me somebody else was teaching Lighthouse Level 1. They did a two-hour lecture once a day, and I was open from gate open to gate close. And, you know, they had so many seats, and after that, hey, they were, you know, we're, we're, we're full. Move along. <laughs> I don't know if they were that brutal, but... Um, and I would do lectures, but it would be mini scale. As a group would come in, I'd say, okay, I've got enough new faces in here, it's time for the two lectures. I said, we're gonna talk about how foghorns work and we're gonna talk about how Fresnel lens work. And I would go through my spiel in technical description, which is sometimes a little bit beyond what the honor wants, but it helps them get the understanding of why it matters. And if you if you show that passion for it, you know it's not just if you're bored, but if you're interested, they may become interested. So kind of a flip side of what she said there. Um, be prepared. Yeah, understand the requirements. <laughs> I uh, one time last year, yeah, uh, I, sh I I don't know where I was, but I showed up for one of our weekend events here. And, oh, hey, Fred, we need you to teach this honor. I have, what do I have, one hour notice or less? <clears throat> okay, what have you got for me? <laughs> so I had to do a crash. Let me figure this out. And the first class was kind of oh, iffy, but it got better with each session that we did. And by the end of the day, you know, everybody was enjoying it. Of course, it was chocolate. Who wouldn't like a class about chocolate? <laughs> Yes, um, we melted chocolate and put them in molds and they could eat their own pieces of candy. But we learned about, you know, why chocolate melts at what temperature? It melts at, huh? Well, it similar, it melts at 98 degrees. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting into the details, but <coughs> I'm just saying it melts at the body temperature. It's designed 
chemically on that's its balance point. And when you get that across to them, it's like, hey, that's why it doesn't melt in the bag, but it melts in your hand and in your mouth. It's designed to do that. So you get these points across and you watch a video, at which brings me to one of my other points. You know, uh, be prepared. Your physical supplies, we had the, the bars of uh, cooking chocolate. We had uh, multimedia tested. Our internet in the gym was, or in the cafeteria in the camp was kind of as, yeah, okay, but it worked. It buffered. It was good enough. Um, didn't used to be that way. Uh, physically test. I didn't have time to get the water up hot enough to start melting the chocolate, and if I had known how long it would have took, I would have had that thing fired up as soon as I got there. Um, it takes a while to get that hot water going and to where the chocolate will melt. So I had to leave it melted for the rest of the day once I got it to that point. Uh, but that was impromptu. Uh, plan B. In your own club, when you're uh, and I have that broken out below. Why plan B? Um, in your club, when you're going to teach an honor and you know everybody's going to learn it together, just because you have the right size group, then if you are having an outside instructor come, they might not show up. So what are you going to do? Sit, oh well, meeting's canceled, you know, they didn't come. Um, or your internet dropped, you didn't pay the bill. Um, your battery went dead in whatever device, your remote quits working, um, your projector bulb died. You know, there's so many things that can go wrong. Have a plan B. What else are you going to do if that doesn't work? So just keep that in mind. That's good for classwork, anything. That's just something you need to learn as a director. Um, the venue, is it Sabbath appropriate? There are some things, I bet there's a long list of things that can be and should not be taught. You know, I don't... Small engine repair? Yeah, small engine repair, <laughs> things like that is not exactly what you want to do in the parking lot of the church on Sabbath morning. Um, Sunday morning, sure, go for it. Change some spark plugs. Um, so be, be, you know, be mindful of that. Is this a classroom or is this, you know, in a pew in the church? You know, I don't know how much space you have. Um, or is it at your campery campsite? You know, how we do honors over here during campery, we take turns and rotate through and spend time at your campsite. That's a little bit different because you don't always have power. You don't always have everything you want. You sure don't have internet. <laughs> so you have to be prepared for that venue. Uh, how long will it take? You know, when I was doing the lighthouses up there, people would actually, there would be people who would take an hour because they wanted to sit and, and understand it. And then there was people like, hey, I can knock this out. And they would get done in 20 minutes. You know, I had it out there and some of it was easy to find. Some of it they had to open up the book, use a glossary and find where that definition was. I didn't make it completely easy. I wanted them to learn the process of learning. You know, here's our first Google, you know, it's a book. It's called an index in the back or a glossary. <coughs> um, and that's one of those plan Bs. Um, you got one session, you got a uh, multi-session, like we were talking about some of, the, some of them you know, that they have to go out and go home and do some of it. So there's going to be where you're going to do two things. And then there's things that take all year long. Through the year, you've got to learn a little bit. You know, you can report as you go and let me know that you're still working on it and check with them. Make sure they are working on it. Remind them at every meeting, hey, have you made any progress when it's that kind of thing? Or let's review what you've learned. Um, what style? There's the self-study and report. You know, if, if, you, if you know this is an advanced Pathfinder and you know that, hey, they're TLT or whatever, you know, they're, they're up there. You know what they can do and know they will do it. You can say, okay, go study these requirements and then you can come back and we can talk about it. Let me be sure that you know it and then we can sign off on you. If you have that level of trust in your Pathfinder, don't tell them no. 
you can't get that honor because I don't have time to teach it to you. But you go over their work and make sure you, you question them and you make sure they've learned it. Um, lecture, yeah, we did a lot of that here today. But there's, there's different ways of teaching it. You know, you got your hands on when you're making crafts. You've got, um, um, I'm hoping, this is a long-term goal, but we're hoping to start up a uh, radio honor. Because um, I used to have my ham li license, my amateur license. Currently, Ron and Doug have theirs. And I keep, you know, mine's a lower letter set than yours. <laughs> you know, because I got it back in eight, 1987 and let it expire. But uh, back when we had to do code. Well, now that's become a little bit easier. I want to not only teach the honor, but I want to help them get their license for those that are interested. And that's going to be a process. We're going to put together, we're going to look at what the requirements are, and we're going to try to put together the program of how to teach it. Because we know we can't teach it all ourselves. We don't have enough time at the conference level to do it. But we're going to help facilitate that somehow, even if it's YouTube videos or something, or, or Skype meetings. We'll figure out a way. We just, got, we just want to start taking it on. We're interested. If we can find anybody, some of the kids, when we did the uh, Morse code at a session last year, and I was talking about how fast people can hear it, they were blown away. For people to be able to understand Morse code at 180 words per minute just shocked them. How, I mean, to me, it sounds like noise like static, but there are, there's actually competitions where they are able to comprehend the, the important points of the message at that speed. Um, and I asked the kids if they were interested in learning radio, and I was surprised at how many people did by the end of that session. But we did a Bible verse in Morse code, and they figured it out. Now, a lot of your radio clubs around here will teach you, help teach them for I know. I know, yeah, your, your, your amateur um, a, ARRL um, clubs can help with that, and they're, you know, I got in through the one up in Cleveland, Tennessee, and, um, but they're all over the place, and I, I know a few over near where I live and stuff. We can find people resources to do that, but we just got to figure out how to tie that into Pathfinders. We got, we got to figure out how to melt it in. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, we may have to have help from them because certified instructor or whatever they do. Um, the hands-on that comes under that, the walkthrough, like I said, for Oshkosh, that fits for some honors, some it doesn't. The other side of me, on the other side of uh, where I was at Oshkosh, the guy was doing uh, about, what was that? That was, he was doing the scribe. It was not an honor, but it was a candidate to be an honor. He had sent it in, and he came and did demonstration teaching of it. That was lecture, but he had some amazing demonstrations. You could hear him do the horn. You know how they pass out the horns for everybody to blow at Oshkosh? For those of you who were there. But he would do it, and it was at a professional scale. When they gave him one of those cheap ones to try it with, it was pathetic. They, they were that bad, but he had a good one, a real one. It was amazing to hear. Uh, and then we already talked about why plan B. Whew. Okay. Any, other? Any more discussion? <laughs> well, Please. I have an um, um, observation. One of the directors say that um, sometimes it's hard for them to finish the book and they don't have time to do the honors and they want to do honors and they don't have time to... Um, just concentrate the honors you have in your book, so you can, the, so the child, the pathfinder can finish all his requirements for the class. In the conference, we, we just have temporaries, we, we teach honors. Uh, and uh, you... Well, the team challenge. Cha the team challenge. Yeah. Team so events, team we, events we, we do honors for you guys to help out and your clubs. Sometimes we can get all the way through it enough to sign off on it. Sometimes we don't. We try to. 
Yeah, sometimes we're trying to do an activities from the region. Uh, last year we did in the region four we did the honor, yeah. honor day. That day was just honors, and people liked. Some of the directors liked it because in that Sunday they did three honors, and the people, the kids get so excited, and that helped you as a director that you don't have to stress. Oh, I didn't need any honors. Yes. But they can hear me better than you, so. Oh, okay. It's not for them to hear; it's for the camera. Yeah. Okay. The um, some of the honors, the the honors are here in the book, in the book in the booklets that the students do. Um, are honors that we can present, or some of the honors require a from certified instructor come and present. You can invite someone, and if you have someone that you think in your church that they can do like. Uh, an honor, y they can do it. But like somebody that is certified in that area to do it, is that is it, a requirement? It, like for, for, for the Pathfinder, it, it's only when it's something that, like CPR. Exactly, yeah. You know, something like that where you're trying to get the certification be beyond the honor. The honor doesn't require that you get certified, I don't think. No, no, not that the Pathfinder gets certified, but that the presenter is certified. Yeah, Kathy does two levels. She does a honor level and then she does the certification because your club is supposed to have somebody that's certified. And I highly recommend that every staff member is because you take turns on who's there and who's not. Like in the in the in the class that you have first aid, um, is is yeah. There, there's, is, there's emergency first aid, yeah. and then there's some really deep camping first aid. There's mm -hmm. different levels of that. You can invite if you have anybody like a nurse going into church. You can invite them to you know to teach if you don't if you don't feel like how to teach that. So you can invite uh, any uh, nurse. Yeah. Find a resource to come in, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, especially Kathy, she goes to a lot of clubs each year, teaching the CPR or first aid or whatever they want. You know, you can find somebody to do it, and she's cheaper than calling the American Heart. Yeah. Yes. Oh, half or less. Yeah. I just wanted to say one of the things that we did at our church was. We divided the kids up into small groups, and then we gave them an honor, one that they could know some of the answers just from their own experience, and also they all had their phones and stuff so they could go online. It was actually a disaster relief, it was a Florida conference honor. And once they, we gave them each group like two or three questions that they had to come up with the answers to, and they had to make a poster board with the answers. And then after a certain period of time, each group had to present to the rest of the other groups, and everybody filled out their form that way. And so the, the groups were multi-level, so we had some, you know, the TOT guys, and we had the friends in there. And they all, you know, got to work as a group. The TLTs or the guys got to lead out a little bit and then they, got, they were able to present. Yeah, so, so that works. Every honor is like, is different. Like, it's your creativity how to do it. You know your kids. You know how they, what the necessities they, they are, they have. So you just go, you just come with your creativity how to, to make them fun for them. Any other questions or any? No, just uh, in general. Uh, does anyone else have any ideas about completing the honors without necessarily putting out the worksheets? Some kids just hate writing and all that kind of stuff. Do you guys ever have to deal with that? <laughs> um. If you could, for instance, at, I have all kinds of people at Oshkosh coming to me, and we were checking them off if they said they were done. Now, what was beautiful about this was that I had people coming from China, you know, Tanzania, uh, all over. And it was like, I can't read your writing, but it looks cool. <laughs> Let me ask you a few questions. And you can spot check them through there. And if they're like, uh, I have to look at my notes. OK, they just scribbled, but they didn't get anything. But if they just started telling me what I was asking, I knew they understood it. If you can talk to them and ask them the questions and you can verbal, that's up to you. But what that piece of paper does is it gives them proof. If they want to keep a notebook, 
you can sell the idea to it that as Pathfinders is developing in these new programs in the future, you know, the advanced stuff, the, the grown-up stuff, if they have a portfolio in there with all their answer sheets or something, you know, that's impressive. When they want to go get that advanced certification and things like that, hey, look at my book, <laughs> you know, they're going to prove that they've been around and done it. Sir? Yeah, in terms of that, I have two staff members that came from another group on the days, and they say, oh, I did all that. I say, okay, where is your, your proof that right. you did all that? I mean, I, I could alter the, the, the badges if you show me that you did it, but they didn't have any of that. Therefore, I can order anything for them just because they say they did it. So okay. that's where the paperwork comes in handy. Oh, here's all my paperwork. Here's all the work that I did on that. Kathy surprised me. She went through some of my childhood memory stuff. You know, that little box that you keep things in that you don't know when you'll ever want it or need it. She found my basic staff training card from 1975. It's like, wow, really? Put it really? on your face. <laughs> 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 topics and different values kind of thing to where you could answer the, the or you could ask the question <laughs> for the answer just like Jeopardy of what matches different things and it was multiple choice it ended up being that but the fun of them coming together and answering and figuring out and learning this information was amazing to watch the interactions and the people trying to well that one sounds better but you know it was fascinating to watch. And so that was online that you can get that? That'd be yeah, interesting. Yeah, if you look, if you do it, it's a, it's a PowerPoint program. Yeah. And if you go on Google and do PowerPoint Jeopardy, yeah. there, you can download the uh, template. Template, yeah. And you can put in your own questions and answers and everything. Wow. Uh, I actually did download it. I've never used it, but I. You have it as a resource by me. That, I mean, that was that was just totally new to me. I said, "Wow, you can do that for an honor." <laughs> yeah. Perhaps say something else. I was just going to add another thing that I do is I use PowerPoint a lot when I teach, and I'll put in videos and you know all kinds of action stuff moving around on the screen. But every uh, once I get enough to information put out to answer maybe five, six, seven questions, I'll have like a slide of a pop quiz and I'll have the question will come up and I'll ask them and I'll have some candy and I'll ask who can say, you know, what to them if they yeah, get, get the answer up on and when, if they don't get a little piece of candy, you'd be surprised how much more they pay attention. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing that I'm going to tell you when, when how make the kids to bring the homework. Have, uh, when I was teaching um, companions, uh, I have a, like a huge uh, treasure box. Oh Lord, everybody wants to go through that yeah. treasure box. Oh, you wrote your, your homework, there we go, you can come. And the, it's just making the attention, you know your kids. You know, maybe some of them doesn't like it or whatever. You can bring something that really gets his attention. I was just gonna suggest, also easily available online are programs that allow you to put in questions and words to make the crossword puzzle. And as long as you don't make it too tricky, or you could put it in the word bank, but 
Be creative. Yeah. There is no cookie cutter template. This is how you teach an onset. It just doesn't fit everything for everybody. Yeah. And we'll, yes, sir. Uh, would you be enabling some of these kids not to even try if you won't let them write out their reports? Or well, it, it depends on the kid. We're, we're saying, in that case, that was an exception. You know, you want to push them to do that. You want to push them to answer the things. And like the White House thing, even in Oshkosh, they were supposed to write a poem, and they were supposed to uh, do research and find three or four verse, verses to put down. You know, they had to do some stuff. They had to do some reading, and they had to draw. They had to draw five different lighthouses, styles of lighthouses, and identify what those were. Well. Some people were more adept at it. Some people were very creative and, and shading and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, wow, you know, we know who the art student is. But you're going to have different level of people, and so you have to make the requirements. You want them to succeed, but you want to set the bar. They they got to put some effort into it. Right? So like she was saying, though, great right out at the multiple choice. That's taken away from them getting the Habit of writing things out. It's, 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 it's an option. Well, if you have a problem child, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to say child. If you have a difficult pathfinder, <laughs> still not sure if that's correct, but <laughs> yeah, different learning style. Thank you. Multiple intelligences. Um, they may, you might have to sing songs to them to get it across. I don't know, but you have to figure that out. You have to figure out what works for Joe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one, you know, if, if my study doesn't like anything that we related to academic work, it's not related to So he will say, if, if you have to write out a bunch of, you know, worksheets, he would really hate that. I mean, and I did have to get creative with the approach, but. One of the things I did was for the camping skills, I had them make an index card with the answers on it. Not all of them, but if you go camping and you want to have a little thing in your pouch to say, oh, I got lost, what would I do? Maybe that, you know, and I was going to laminate it and all that, put a little ring on it. And then, so they had some of the answers that way. And then the other answers, we just discussed them. But what I was, my, the idea was, at my church, they usually printed out a certificate for every honor that you get. So you can put that in your binder. And then I thought, you could tell me if this is a wrong approach, but if you if you created that poster, for example, or you created that little card thing, maybe I could just give them the answers because they're all on, on board online anyway. Print out those worksheets, print out the answers for them. After the fact, when I give them the certificate, I give them the answers so they have it together, knowing that they've already done all the work and they've produced something that had their responses on it. You know, like when we did that poster board, they didn't take that home with them, so then they wouldn't have any record at home, you know, that they... You can take a picture of them, print out the photo of them with the poster. I'm just saying okay, it's yeah. something yes. for later record keeping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's not good idea. You know, yeah. That's not good idea. <laughs> so, something you said tri trickled a thought in my thick head. Um, <laughs> they don't like schoolwork. Pathfinders and teaching honors, teaching classwork, it is a lot like school work, but what are they in school for? To learn. To learn. To learn. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You, you, you have to, you know, keep that direction in mind. You can say school is for your education, for your well-being when you get farther down in life. This is to help you, parts of it are to help you to get to heaven. Learning about lighthouses, that doesn't get you to heaven. Except that you have to look up these verses. You have to use your intelligence to figure out, hey, there's a light to my path. You know, there, there's different examples in the Bible where light is important. It's a metaphor for several different things. You know, God is feeding us something. And, and he's helping us to find our way home. And you want to you want to find a way to direct them toward that away from being the scholastic and towards the spiritual. Saying, well, it's...
sort of like Sabbath school, but we're learning, we're trying to find fun things to learn. Right. You know, they may not want a decoupage award or whatever it is, I don't know. I don't know the whole list of 300, sorry. <laughs> but you want to get some, what would be a creative thing for you to learn that we can do? You know, something that's physically possible for us to accomplish. You know, and, and, and state it that they're accomplishing something. You know, make it a goal that, that they want to do. And say, okay, between you and this accomplishment is this. You got to get from point A to point B. Yeah. If you go to the university, when you go to college, you have to write, you have to search. You know, that is the way we build the kids to, to try and we're helping them when they go to college. They have to do that. If not, they're not going to get get, 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 get late, right? So it's, it's part of our life. The other thing is that, you know, all the media is, is getting, you know, for the kids just pressing buttons mm -hmm. is better. <laughs> so, but that is like our responsibility or like how we can get the kids to be on that.